Hello everyone, I'm so excited to have you here on another episode of Right Off Track. Today we have another beautiful human being joining us, sharing her wisdom, and I'm so excited to hear some of the thoughts and learnings you get from her. So today we have on the podcast Judy Cochran. Uh, We will be exploring with her the keys to self-awareness and living a purposeful life, which I know we all are trying to do. Mm -hmm. And Judy is also known as J.C. Cochran, and she's an author, publisher, screenwriter, book coach, ghostwriter, alignment coach, hypnotherapist, speaker, and the owner of awarehouse.life. Through her work, Judy invites you to embark on a transformative journey of self-discovery and self-love. And today, join us as we dive into her wisdom, uncovering the power of personal growth, connection, and embracing the goodness that surrounds us. This is an episode you don't want to miss, so get ready to unlock your true potential and discover the beauty of life with Judy. Welcome to the podcast. Ah, thank you. It's so good to be here. A pleasure. And how I met Judy was very funny, right? We were just on Instagram uh, following some interesting posts, and she reached out to me, being like, hey, have you ever thought of writing a book? And little did Judy know... (laughs) <laughs> have I oh boy oh yeah <laughs> but when I had a chance to talk of Judy I was just captivated by your energy and your passion and then I went and read did some research on you and I was like oh my gosh what a life beyond the book you're leading you're doing so many things so I want to give you space to share all about that could you tell a little bit about your story like where you are now and how maybe you got there you know, it's funny because uh, when I started talking to you on the phone, I mentioned this to you, but after I got off, I was talking to my husband, we were having lunch and he goes, she's like you. <laughs> and I I think that, you know, we're a lot alike. We endure something in life. It, it moves us. We recalibrate and we learn what we have to learn from it. And we move through it. And then, because we're uplifters, (laughs) well, we want to share it. We want to tell other people, you know, how we did it. And it's not, it's not that they're supposed to do it exactly like us, but it gives them permission that they will find their own way through whatever obstacle they're going to come across. And, um, you know, so I've just learned my way kind of like you. I endure something. I embrace it. At first, I resist it. I might even get angry about it, but I embrace it and I learn something from it and I go study it, you know, and it's funny when you started rattling off all the things I do, I am a serial (laughs) entrepreneur. I, everything just turns into something else. I write a book. I'm like, okay, I'm minding my own business. I'm writing my book. But then people came to me afterwards and they're like, wait, I think I need to share my story you seem to have healed on deeper levels with that and reading your book has healed me. I want to do that for other people. And so I'm like, all right, well, I have a publishing company. I had it for me alone. So I might as well just help other people write their books. And so I became book coacher, you know, just a book coaching coach. And eventually I said this on the phone, people were like, okay, I don't like this writing thing. You write it for me. And I'm like, no way. I'm not, I'm not going to write other people's stories. They have to write their own. I will content edit and help it, you know, come together. Um, but then I started taking ghost writing gigs. And so that has just blown the publishing company up wide open. And so anyway, I live and then I learn and then I want to share that's the basic answer to your question. That inspires me because I think when I started this, there was a sense of, oh, I'm a little bit crazy. And that's always been a little bit of something inside me. Like I want to do more. I'm a little crazy. And I wanted to share these stories and create this podcast to encourage others who have like, I, maybe I'm a little crazy, but you know what? That's awesome. And yeah. you know what? You take that passion and look at Judy, look at everything she can do. And manifest that and help others, right? Like your crazy, your unique self is going to help others if you embrace it and don't try to hide it, but actually amplify it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, we all have to be who we are. And so often with Instagram and everything, we can compare ourselves and that can get unhealthy. 
Because we got to just remember, we all have our own weird, unique gifts. And we make our way through this world in our own way. And then sometimes that just gives other people permission to do the same. Absolutely. Yes. Sometimes we think that we need to, you know, I had, I thought I'm too bright. I'm too loud. I need to dim it down, make people feel Uh, comfortable. And I realized, no, actually by being myself, whatever that is, you don't have to be that same person. You give other people permission to be the same. And one thing that I really enjoyed about our conversation, because you reached out, you graciously spent an hour talking to me for absolutely free about this book idea, what I want to do and just shared some of the knowledge. I was like, you know what? I haven't really thought about doing this because I thought, well, you have to do it alone. You have to go through the miserable process of just like, oh, okay, reading and writing and book and it's all about yourself, figure it out. And it was just so eye-opening to me that there are people who care and I just felt your energy and the idea share and just how open you were to giving me thoughts and ideas. So just you sharing your wisdom with me. And I was like, okay, what a great resource that is. I want to share that with the world. And Beyond that, if you don't mind me sharing, you also wrote an incredible book, 11 Days, your memoir. And just when I read this, oh my gosh, that could just be the career in itself is just sharing the story. And you've made so much more of that. But can you talk a little bit about what that story is, like how that all came about? That story is all about alignment and awareness, which feeds into all my coaching, whether I'm alignment coaching somebody or ghostwriting or book coaching. Um So, you know, 11 days, I was a young mom. I had an 11, a nine and a seven year old. And I was married for about 15 years at that point. And I was a hypnotherapist. I had a private practice. It was booming, but I was doing good work for other people, but not doing the work on myself. So I actually had bleeding ulcers and it was It was due to a time, this is the tagline of 11 days, it says it all, from 35 million to food stamps, what a family gains when losing the American dream. And what happened is our marriage started falling apart. The motherhood skills I thought I had, I thought just frankly, they sucked. I was never calm. I was always worried. I was OCD about everything. And I got myself really in a state of dis-ease with my body and my mind. And here I was teaching all this stuff, but I wasn't able to apply it to myself. And so I ended up talking to this woman in Santa Barbara, random phone call. And I said, what do you think, you know, about our future? And she was quite intuitive. And she said, well, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. However, it's um, another train (laughs) coming your direction. And I went, what? No, because my husband has a job interview. He's going to make it back up to the top again. We're going to course correct. We're going to be fine. She's like, yeah, Um, no. And so anyway, I asked her if I, if she knew of anybody in Santa Barbara that needed a house sitter, preferably with animals, because I didn't have one at the time and I know how healing they are and they would help regulate my nervous system. You know, they just do that. And she said, nobody leaves Santa Barbara in the summer. And I went, well, okay, let's just give it to God. Let's see what happens. Within an hour, she called me back and she said, okay, this is divine. Do you have 11 days in July to stay in this casita, blah, 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 and get your head and heart together? And I went, yes, I will do it. And so I basically went to my husband, who is not the caregiver, and I said, look, I got to get out of here. I have to get my blank together. And he said, you're kidding me, right? You're going to leave me with the three kids who was never a caregiver. (laughs) He's like, no. And then he was like, you know what? Go. Because here's the real truth. I, my plan was to go, be silent because it's mandatory in order to hear God or the universe or whatever current you think is running through the universe. But for me, it was God. I was going to do yoga. I was going to meditate, be quiet and get strong enough so that when I came home, I was going to leave my husband. That was the plan. And that's not what happens. When I went, I surrendered and I gave it to God and I stayed open to what I had to learn in this situation. It was another time where yet I had to embrace life 
and recognize our finances were where they were. The marriage was where it was. But I saw my role and responsibility differently being away from all of them. And I got myself whole again. And I actually fell back in love with him and without him there. And he miraculously fell madly in love. Not that he didn't love the children, but he didn't really know how they operate. He fell in love with them and learned to be a provider in a different way. And it changed our life. And along that, in those 11 days, I met amazing people who I call God sent. They had signs and messages for me that could have only been from the divine. They didn't even know me, but they said everything I needed to hear. And that was a lot of truth, actually. It wasn't, oh, you're so wonderful. It was, you seem extremely wired and uptight. Like what? (laughs) You need to relax. Um, And trust, trust that what is meant for you will not pass you by. And I kept feeling like everything's passing us by. We blew it. We blew $35 million. What stupid people do that? Like, that's sad. And, um, but anyway, I came to a forgiveness for myself and for all involved. And it just, it saved our family. It really saved our family. I miss the private jets. I'm not going to lie. I'd like those back. (laughs) Um, I love what money brings for freedom uh, because it allows you to do all the other good things you want to do, you know, but anyway, so that's what the 11 day story is about. And that's what gets people, you know, and then they go, wait a minute, I have a similar story and I want to share it. So. I love that. I can't relate because I'm scared of flying. So to me, the private jet sounds even scarier. Oh, <laughs> that's what's saving me. That's why I don't need yeah. all the millions because I'm like, I don't need that in my life. Yeah. I can go on commercial. <laughs> yeah, it's safer. It's safer for me. <laughs> for flying, by the way. That's an easy one to fix. <laughs> that, that will be the next thing we're working on to do is a book <laughs> to cover that. Right. But- One thing we talked about, which I think you hit on, is that people relate to your story even more so right now because people are undergoing this unique wave of challenge. Maybe not unique, right? This has happened before. Layoffs have happened before. But also we're coming out of COVID, which changed people's lives. It, I think, amplified anxiety and just some of those mental challenges that I and other people face. And now there's this layoff situation where a lot of people are like, hey, I may be losing everything I know, like my identity feels threatened, my income feels threatened. And can you share a little bit more about how people have come to you and how that's your story has resonated with them and what learnings we can share? Yeah, I think the tie in to these books I've written and then also COVID have been amazing, like divine timing. I couldn't have, I couldn't have planned that better. Um, we have been so obsessed with, you know, our IQs and it wasn't until COVID where we got to see our emotional IQ, like how durable are we really? How quick do we snap? Cause we got, we all got tested. We got tested. We were, you know, secluded with our families and our partners. So you have to look at your relationships very closely when you're stuck together like that. We can't hide behind our busyness, you know? And I think that 11 days for me was about no more busyness. And it took me four days to come off of busy mommy mode and settle down. Took me four days. And so after I wrote that book, people were like, how did you do what you did in 11 days? Like, what did you practice exactly? And so that's why I wrote the guidebook temporarily closed for self-care and spiritual maintenance. And it's just a guidebook, but it's a companion to the 11 days, but it's also a standalone and it sold a lot during COVID because people were like, okay, well, I'm literally temporarily closed. My business is closed. I mean, like, this is ridiculous. Um, My advice always is, and it will never change. It was the first t-shirt I ever designed for spirituality, that line I created, and it's called Begin Within. And it's the first chapter of the guidebook because we have to go internal and let go of all external chaos 
and distractions in order to get aligned to who we really are. And who we really are, our spiritual beings first, having this human experience second. So when we get trapped in, oh my God, I just lost my job. Oh my God, my husband wants to divorce me or whatever it is. It's just, it's just a distraction. Yes, it's real. It's happening. But until we go and begin within and do our work and become aware of who we are and why we are the way we are, why we operate the way we operate, um, because it could be, you know, we just learned it from parents or a teacher or whatever. Until we go through that self-discovery, we really don't know who we are. And so I, I, when COVID happened, everybody was like, oh my God, this is awful. I'm, you know, everything's falling apart. And I'm like, this is the best thing that could ever happen to this country because we have been off on this American dream thing. And my husband and I have been paving the streets trying to tell people, stop chasing Stop chasing because that stuff might not even be meant for you. Allow what is meant for you. Allow source to bring it to you and show you, you know, through ideas and such. But anyway, so that's Gosh, that. I'm listening to you and honestly, it's resonating very deeply. And I'm sure our listeners are like, I hope are feeling that too, because I have started this entrepreneurial journey just recently and I can attest to diving to something new, something unknown is terrifying, but yeah. amazing people do come up. And that's been a huge just uplifter and a resource to strengthen my journey. But the other thing that I think is more important is that I probably need that temporary close guy too, because <laughs> I do have a type A personality where I'm like, well, this, and I wanted this and this, and to your point, that can work. But I also am realizing well, how do I slow down so I could be giving back to myself, refilling my cup as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as just a good human being? And it's really hard. It, for it me, hard. it's really hard to slow down because- yeah, it's, Especially when you have a house full of kids. Yes. It is hard. But here's the thing. If you do it, you will teach them by doing that. And it will be the greatest gift you can give them. Because we can do, 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 and, and have, have, have all the things. And we could teach them. You can get that degree and that degree and then that job and that job and that climb. We could teach them all the steps. But that's not where real happiness comes from. And they'll find out later, money can't buy those things. You know, so it's like, and then they go into their 40s and they're buying Corvettes and wondering, you know, wanting to leave their marriages. And it's because they never you know, they didn't begin within and do the interior work. And here's the thing too, about temporarily closing. It's powerful. It is so powerful. Einstein, all the greats, all the geniuses have a met, had a meditation practice of some sort, whether it was golfing or sitting in silence or whatever it was, swimming um, but silently, that's where they were in, divinely inspired by some of their greatest things. So we need to turn back to that and quiet things down because it's really loud out there. And we're getting too scattered. And it's why our young adults right now are the worst they have ever been with suicide, depression, and anxiety. Now it's like, I don't know, a, the percentage keeps increasing, like the stock market goes up and down. It, we have so many kids on meds right now. What is that really going to do for us in 20 years? Because we have to up those meds and you can't take them off of them after they've been on them for 20 years. You know, So I, we have a really serious problem about chasing American dreams, people, connections, jobs. And yeah. we have to we have to settle down. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's funny. I, I'm trying to live that because I was like, well, I have this opportunity to create a success that actually is a success journey and is unique to me and is yeah. not a success goal. But I do catch myself 
getting caught into those old habits and old thoughts. But I realized, A, my goal, I want to live right now in the way I want to live in the sense that I don't want it to always be like, if you, if you keep chasing, it's never enough, right? No matter how much things you have, no much, no matter how much money you have, no matter how amazing your body looks, if it's always about the next thing, you're never going to have enough because your mind's always trained to think about the next thing. Yeah. And so I try to be very intentional about what is my success journey? Like what would I want to do day to day that makes me feel like I am doing and living the life I want to live Yes. And this, the podcast is like, I want to share stories because it could be so different. Like, it's not that checkbox, 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 checkbox. It's very yeah. unique to you. And we need that space, like you said, to reflect, right? Yeah. To journal, to just shut up and just say, like, okay, let's yeah. honor what's within. What's happening? How's my body feeling right now yeah. with everything going on? What is that yes. telling me? Yeah, it's so important. And if you could teach your young children how to hit the pause button. That's one of the chapters in there. Instead of saying meditation, I like to just say, you know what? It's just a pause. Don't worry about it. You don't have to be a monk. I learned how to meditate. You know how I learned how to meditate? I think it's in there. It's in both books, actually. (laughs) I was your age with three young children sitting, standing at the kitchen sink doing a mound of dishes. And I started just inhaling and then exhaling slowly. And then I started paying attention to the bubbles on the plate and I watched them like cascade off and I let them go slowly, not just really fast. Like I got to get this task over with Mm -hmm. and I just let it happen. I'm not kidding you. All three of my kids glommed onto my shins and calves and were sitting there. I like matching my energy. Everybody Mm -hmm. was peaceful and I'm like, This is miraculous. Like, what is happening here? And when you study meditation, it is that. You create like this essence of energy around you, and it just makes everybody feel calmer, Mm -hmm. more peaceful. And that I just started. That's literally how I started. And it was accidental. I love it. The inspiration that comes from dishwashing. Although I've heard that, I've heard that before. Somebody's like, my favorite thing to do when I meditate or am mindful, right? Because mindful is in the moment, right? Meditation yes. maybe sit down is, is to do dishes. Like, that's like, that's crazy. But yeah. and laundry, <laughs> I, I moved it to laundry because I was like, this is kind of cool. Just the noise in there. I kept meditating to like other people's voices and music. And, and then I would find myself going, his voice is annoying. Or I'd say, I don't like that music. That chime was too loud or it's rain. I don't want to hear a storm right now. And I would start judging the whole meditation experience. I'm like, all right, that's it. So what I found is running water and I will literally use a YouTube app. I have tons of downloads on my website and here I am telling you to go to YouTube. But, um, I, if you go to YouTube there's air conditioning and brown noise and just water. And you can't judge that. You're not going to say, well, I've heard better air conditioning sounds, you know, or whatever. <laughs> um, Please just, comment if you have. I want to hear. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, it's just a way to like empty the mind, not fill it up with music or somebody else's voice. I love yeah. that. And I could talk to you all day. But we haven't also mentioned a warehouse at life. I'd love to give you a little space to just share a little bit about that. And then also like you've done so many things. I want to also give you space, like anything we haven't touched on that you want to share. The world. My warehouse dot life, that website, that's like, that gives me life. (laughs) So it has everything housed under it. It's like a one-stop shop for inspirational, like well-being and body, mind, and clothes and house. Um, (laughs) I love all the things. I check off all the boxes. But when I came home after the 11 day trip, I drove home and I had this, I was silent and I had been very quiet over the 11 days. So this is my point. I got a divine idea and I just, it was like a home run for me. And I'm like, I'm going to start a t-shirt company. And it is going to be called Spirituality, T-E-E. 
and I'm going to sell these t-shirts. And it was only because on day nine, I spent the whole day with a homeless guy in Santa Barbara and I bought him a new t-shirt and put broke, but not broken on the front of it. And everybody that walked past him was like, some people were hugging him. It blew me away. And I put it aside. And on day 11, driving home, I'm like, I have to start a t-shirt company and I'm going to put words like that on it that move people and create conversation and community. Well, that blew up. I ended up meeting Dr. Wayne Dyer, who was a speaker on the circuit. He talked me into going to an event to sell them. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm on food stamps. That's impossible. And he goes, well, impossible? Break up the word. And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, the word impossible. It says I'm possible. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Cause the dude on the beach in my Santa Barbara trip said the same thing to me. And I'm like, how weird they don't know each other. Anyway, I went with like, I don't know, 17 boxes. I came home with one box. I made 10,000 in cash I got an order from Entenmann's Donuts, the family farm that they own, for their gift shop to make all their T-shirts, which was like a $7,500 order. And then Louise Hay, who ran the whole event, she's like the mama ship, she ordered like $8,000 worth of T-shirts for her orphanage in Africa. I'm like, dream job. Like I landed my dream job on food stamps and had to go home. Needless to say, we were no longer on food stamps. Wow. So that spawned into many different things. I started making jewelry, selling the crystals that go on the jewelry and all the things that make us vibrant and alive that are come from our earth and God. And, and then I started selling incense and essential oils because they're just clean for the body. And I like those for my kids and they're safe. And and it's just one thing after another started to spawn. And then I down, I just created a bunch of downloads called tools on my website that are for self-hypnosis. So if you're having trouble with addiction or habitual drinking every night or anxiety and procrastination and all the things, there's like 35 downloads. But I just decided I'm putting them all in one spot. And then when people read my book and they go, hey, I like her. What else does she have? It's just all there. And I love it that it's called a warehouse. You know, someday I want to find the most divine investor partner and create a brick and mortar and just make it an experience, not just for us, you know, to get our self-development and self-love acts going, but like where we could bring our kids and there's a library and there's just experiences where the kids can figure out how to do this, but sooner, sooner than us, because they need it now. They need it. They need it now. So, yeah. Wow. So that's the warehouse. I My love, love that. I love that. And I, I love this because it inspires me to just, and I hope it inspires others to say, wow, you can take this and just live your life and honor those experiences and just yeah. be amazed of where the universe God will guide you with yes. that. Yeah. He'll open up the doors. I mean, we don't have, we can, we're supposed to, Mother, Mother Teresa said, pray and then move your feet. I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying sit on your ass. I'm saying <laughs> I have worked my tail off, but yeah. with love every step of the way, because I love this. I don't even think it's work. I don't work. I just am who I am. And then everything filters through that. And that's all there is. And I think everybody has this ability. It's just, we get so distracted with, well, what should I be doing? Because what did my yeah. parents say I was good at? Or that teacher or whatever. It's like, no, go be quiet, and figure out what lights you up yeah. and then go do that. Go yeah. do that. I think there's a big cost of playing it safe, right? The, the, the safety zone that we have is actually not keeping us safe. It makes us more vulnerable to change. It. Change is inevitable, right? But yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. And now my little one comes in as we talk about change. Oh, so oh like, that's so funny. Yes, it's my four-year-old. Yes. Oh, I love it. He's my little chaos agent. So he knows. He needs to bring his chaos excitement in. Here. He knows when to come in. He knows. He knows. He knows his but, job. But I, I want to be respectful of your time and I just have a little bit more. So, A, was there anything we didn't cover that you want to highlight before we wrap up with some three rapid fire questions? I don't think so. I think that's it. I think you covered it all. You did a great job. My pleasure. I've had so much fun. I'm like listening and like, I really need to slow down. If this is, if you're listening, is this is your sign to slow down, which is very hard and yeah. see what reflections come, like honor that time in that space. But before those I- ideas that come from that are going to be much better than the ones you're trying to come up with. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can just talk to you. We have more episodes that we need to have you on to just prolong this discussion. But yeah. to wrap up three rapid fire questions, let me know when you're ready. Ready. Okay. What motivates me the most is? Uh, what motivates me the most? Love. Oh, love it. Okay. Success to me is? Joy. Okay, you're doing great. I love this. Last one. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So in the positive context, just to give people preface, going off track is? Always a good thing. <laughs> Always a good thing. Oh my gosh. Love it. Okay. Before we let you go, where should people find you? How should people work with you, connect with you? I think the best way is probably either go to a warehouse.life. Um, or jccochran.com. They both connect um, and you'll find all offerings, all things there. And I also post your Instagram handle because that's where you can yes. find Judy showing a lot I of amazing love, stuff. I love DMing, DM me, we can talk. And uh, yeah. And if you want book coaching, that's all on the website too, but you can DM me and we'll connect and, and do a call, see where you're what you want and what your goals are. I love it. You're amazing. Thank you so much for your time, for sharing your story, for, for inspiring us to slow down and just sharing the real story. Like you've lived this and you've shown us what is possible when you embrace that real life, the real struggle, the learning from it and that intention behind like doing the, doing something you're passionate about that helps others. So thank you so much. This was so awesome for me. Okay. Thank you. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Right Off Track. Please share with us what stood out to you. Tag us any questions you have, any thoughts that came out. We'd love to hear from you. And we look forward to having you on the next episode of Right Off Track. Until next time.